So we're going back to the, the 19th century, okay? Um, by the way, little aside note, uh, in England, it, it, and for most of the 19th century, they had no public schools. There's no such thing as public school, okay? And they had the highest literacy rate in the world. Just an interesting little uh, piece of information for the time. Literacy was actually like a thing back then. Like there were large, you know, percentages of populations that couldn't read. And back then in that economy, it wasn't as much of a of a um, necessity as it was to, you know, do the backbreaking agricultural work of the day. Um, but with no public schools, they had the highest literacy, and it ended up, you know, evolving into one of the most advanced societies that that's ever existed. So, uh, sticking with this in the in the early 1800s. Uh, I don't know if you've, you've heard this before, Rob, but this is real interesting stuff. Okay, maybe I have talked about this before, but anyway, this is it's worth repeating. So in the Prussian Empire, they were having a big problem. And it, it was a problem that was actually quite common in European monarchies, okay? So the, the problem they were having is that they would, w when they were fighting wars over territorial disputes, usually with other monarchies, they would conscript armies, right? And the, a lot of their soldiers would do these really ridiculous things like run away or piss themselves and get killed. And th this was a, a major fucking problem that they would have is that these people wouldn't happily sacrifice themselves for the state. And, of course, back then, right, these are monarchies, so they didn't have what we have in modern times with this bullshit illusion of the government is the people type crap that we've all come up with. You know, it's like, well, that's just us, and they're our representatives. When you have a king, it's a lot more naked, and it's like, this is just some fucking dick, you know what I mean, who's, like, ruling over people and asserts that he rules us. But people, given their natural instincts toward wanting to survive, it's kind of the, you know... The reason our genes have survived for so long is because that is very built into us. People would run. They would run instead of happily sacrificing themselves for the states. And this was a big problem that they were having in the Prussian, uh, in the Prussian Empire. And they came up with a solution for it. They came up with a solution for how they could try to get their soldiers to not run away on the battlefield. And it was a solution that started with taking them when they were kids and and brainwashing them all the way through their life. And you know what they called it? School. And this is where school comes from. This Prussian system uh, was adopted by Horace Mann, who's known as the godfather of public education in America, and he took it in the mid-1800s and applied it in Massachusetts. And then, in the late 1800s, this spread like wildfire during the Progressive Era all around America. Okay? Now, I, I just want to say this, okay? Because now this is Tom Wood's analogy, and I have said this before on the program, but this is worth repeating every single episode because it's the most fucking brilliant thing I've ever heard in my life. All right, Tom Wood's, this is his analogy, and I'll put my own little spin on it, but uh, he said... Imagine anyone else except the state was in charge of the schools. Imagine it was any other organization. And he says, imagine Walmart was in charge of the schools. And they, had our, and, they, and they mandated that you had to send your kids to Walmart school. You were going to get thrown in a cage. Men with guns would come and get you and throw you in a cage if you didn't send your kids to Walmart school. Or maybe they'll come and take your kids away from you. Okay, so already Walmart is forcing you to go to their Walmart school. And every day they start with their kids pledging allegiance to Walmart. And they sing a song in front of the Walmart logo. And then around the school, they have pictures of all of the Walmart CEOs. And you're taught to praise all of the Walmart CEOs. And they make up just these like bullshit lies about them. Like It's like, the first Walmart CEO never told a lie when he was caught chopping down the cherry tree. He said, it was me, Dad. And, and then here's this other Walmart CEO, and he was the great emancipator. Okay, kids, now let's pledge allegiance to Walmart again. Wouldn't you think to yourself, this is a little bit sick? Like, this is insane that people would want to send their children to be brainwashed by this group of people. Well, this is what school is. 
It's not an aberration. It's not that they fucked up in this one area and that kids happened to get brainwashed in this one way. It's what it was designed to do, to brainwash kids into obedience for the state. It's a fucking Prussian invention to get you to fucking happily sacrifice yourself for the state. And by the way, the Prussians were the cultural and geographic precursor to the Nazis. This is a big part of the reason of why Nazism rose up to begin with. There's this great podcast, the School Sucks podcast, that did a whole episode on this. I highly recommend it. But I couldn't help but think of this when we're looking at all this college craziness. Well, how is it that these college kids are able to be brainwashed into this absolute nonsense? And a big part of it is because they've been brainwashed from kindergarten through 12th grade their entire lives. This is what the system is set up to do. And Horace Mann... Uh, who's known as the godfather of public education, he wrote about this. And, and he basically said that he knew what they were doing when they were adopting the Prussian model, and he knew that it had been used to brainwash people into accepting authoritarian governments and becoming subservient to government. And he basically said, well, you know, if, if they can brainwash uh, uh, kids into, into those ends, then we can kind of brainwash kids into supporting Republican institutions. My words, not his. But he basically acknowledged it. But this is the system of school. This is what it's set up to do. And it's now been uh, uh, completely embraced. And this is why you don't produce kids who are critical thinkers. You don't produce kids who challenge the status quo at all. You produce kids who will happily sacrifice their own intellectualism for to be a cog in this fucking machine. And, and you, you really got to sit there and wonder how any fucking 18, 19-year-old can be sitting there just shouting going, Bleh! while someone else is trying to make an argument and not feel, not, not have any part of their brain that goes, oh, maybe I'm a fuck, I'm immature for a five-year-old right now. I am having a public temper tantrum. And this is embarrassing. And this is because government's in charge of the schools. And this is how you produce this shit. Because if you don't have that, we could actually figure out free market solutions for education where you actually um, educate people. And you actually have a, a well-informed citizenry of critical thinkers. And instead we have this bullshit. So anyway, just thought that, I, I find all that stuff really interesting. And I thought it was worth sharing. It's, it's hard for me to not look at uh, uh, look at something like that and just be like, man, how the fuck does our society, our society produce these things? And that's because government's got a near monopoly on schools and you're forced into them. Parents are forced to send their kids. And of course, it's all, you know, same with uh, uh, the Prussians. It was all pushed in it with the, you know, with, with the excuse or with the, uh, the justification, I should say, being that, um, oh, well, we're just doing this because, you know, we want to improve literacy rates and educate children and teach them about the world and all this. But they knew exactly what they were doing it for. And um, like I said, Britain had the highest literacy rate in the world without any public schools. I really would love to see what we would do as a society if we just abolished all public education, just got rid of all of it. I really don't think parents hate their children so much that they'd go like, well, that's it. We don't want our kids to know anything. We don't want our kids to know how to read. We don't want them to know mathematics. We don't want them to know about history. I think right away we'd start finding really interesting creative ways to teach our kids and we would not be producing fucking embarrassments like those kids at those colleges.